Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. It's time once again for your weekly wrap up. And this week I thought I would talk about some rumors that are out there about how your mobile phone might bypass the internet completely for some tasks. And this would allow your phone to send and receive text messages anywhere in the world via satellite. Let's get to it. Now, I got the idea for today's video after reading this post on Robert X. Kringley's website. Now, I always thought Robert X. Kringley was the guy, but apparently it's a pen name. And at one point, there was a lot of authors that wrote under that pen name. But these days, uh, it is written by Mark Stevens, who has uh, inherited the name for some time now. And he used to cover uh, these kinds of tech topics on PBS, but now he's doing this on his own. And on the website here, he's talking about Apple's space ambitions, about how back when the iPhone 13 was coming out, there was some speculation that the iPhone 13 might support low bandwidth messaging over satellite. Now, Apple denied last year that they were pursuing this, and Crinkley notes that their denial was notable because Apple doesn't typically respond to things out in the rumor press, but they responded to that. And part of the rumor last year was that a company called Global Star was going to be the mechanism by which Apple would conduct this satellite messaging. And as Space News notes here last month of this year, that Global Star announced that there is now a secret customer that they're working with that will launch an additional 17 satellites into their low Earth orbit constellation and it's going to be about a $327 million project, but the company is not sharing who that company is, but a lot of people believe that company to be Apple. And for Apple, $327 million to have their own satellite network seems like a pretty good deal and a drop in the bucket, given how much cash they have on hand. Now in the past, global satellite networks were very expensive. You had to build a big satellite and get it into geosynchronous orbit. It was expensive to build that satellite. It was expensive to launch the satellite. And there was limited amounts of two-way communication you could do with that configuration. But things have changed dramatically. The cost of launch has gone down substantially and technology has improved dramatically. So you don't need a big satellite. You can build a lot of tiny ones and put them into a lower orbit where there's less latency for that two-way communication. Rocket Lab is one company that is doing the affordable launching. Uh, they have a launch pad in New Zealand and another one in Virginia here in the US. They've been launching quite frequently actually. And they often send up a whole bunch of satellites, dozens of them. So one of their most recent missions deployed 34 microsatellites to a sun synchronous orbit for a whole bunch of different customers, as you can see here. There's even amateur radio satellites, which we'll talk about in a few minutes that you can communicate with uh, with a ham radio. And SpaceX is also getting in on this. So they are launching microsatellites on their Falcon 9 rockets. And they have a date in which the rocket leaves and you can book your flight on it for about a million bucks if your satellite weighs 3.6 kilograms or less and you just attach it to one of their uh, deployment points on the little carpool device here and off you go. So you can see just how inexpensive things have become in a really quick period of time. And SpaceX and Rocket Lab are not the only companies in this business. There's a lot of others working on it. Uh, one company that's making a lot of progress is Astra, which had a lot of issues getting their first rockets into orbit, but they're starting to figure out the problems there. So it is a very busy area of space right now. And I think you're going to see not only Apple doing this, but a lot of other companies doing it too, because it is affordable. And I think a lot of these companies are looking at the technical success of Starlink, where SpaceX was able to successfully build out a global ISP that can work anywhere and provide service that's comparable with what you might get on a low-end cable subscription. I tested it out here last year in Connecticut where we got a dish and just put it in the backyard and within a few minutes we had a broadband connection with no infrastructure in between. Uh, my brother has been using it up in Vermont all the time as his primary internet connection. It gave him a true broadband connection which was not available in his area and he found it to be a game changer for not only his personal use, but also for his business activities. And given how governments around the world are becoming more interested in regulating private communications, 
being able to bypass the local telecom infrastructure has a lot of value for companies like Apple. And if you look at what's going on in Ukraine right now, Starlink has been a real game changer. They delivered hundreds of Starlink terminals, if not more than that at this point. The Russians have not been able to stop it. And in areas that are occupied by Russia where there's intense censorship going on and propaganda, uh, the Ukrainians are able to get their messages delivered into areas that are under occupation in addition to communicating with areas where the Russians had destroyed the local communications infrastructure. And there's not much that Russia can do right now to stop this. And I think this is something that will be important for free speech in areas that are seeing that speech being curtailed dramatically. Now, if we look at the speed, though, of the network that Apple might be looking at, it's not very fast. They're looking at about 10 megabits per second to and from each satellite. That's not a lot when you think about sending video messages and images, which probably won't be possible over this. But if you think about it, text messaging can work quite well over a very low bandwidth network like this. And I think that might be the intent of this, that if you happen to uh, go out of an area where there's no cellular coverage, you can start working through these low Earth orbit satellites to send text messages and your position should something happen to you. And we've heard so many times how people go missing in areas of the wilderness where there's not very good cell coverage. And to know that every phone sold has the ability to communicate with a satellite to tell people where you are, I think is a big deal that can maybe save hundreds of lives per year if you don't have to rely on local cellular infrastructure all the time. And you don't need some huge antenna to do this either. As I mentioned a few weeks ago, I recently passed my ham radio exam and I picked up this little AnyTone radio for my first ham radio. And believe it or not, I can pick up signals from orbiting satellites just with its built-in antenna here. In fact, I've been frequently listening to the ISS ham radio repeater as the space station has orbited overhead. Now on the space station, there are two Kenwood off-the-shelf ham radios that are installed along with an antenna that's outside of the station. And occasionally the astronauts will pop on and communicate with people on the ground but usually it's configured in a crossband repeater mode where you transmit from the ground on one frequency and then whatever the space station hears, it broadcasts back down on a different frequency. And ham operators have a very short window, but if you hit it right, you can talk to people over a very large distance through the space station acting as a satellite repeater. Also on the station, on that other radio that they have installed, they occasionally will allow you to transmit data packets back and forth to the Kenwood radio configured for that. And that uses a protocol called APRS, which is based on the old packet radio protocol from the 80s. And this is a 1200 baud, very slow uh, data transfer protocol, but you can actually transmit a lot of meaningful information in that little data packet. If you go to a website called APRS.FI, you can see those packets being transmitted back and forth all over the world. And amateurs have set up these little digipeters so that any time they hear one of those packets over the air, they rebroadcast it to extend its reach. And then, of course, many of these stations also upload the information into the database over the internet. But in times of emergency, this is used for first responders to broadcast their locations because as long as you've got radios with power, you don't need a cell phone connection, you don't need the internet, you can transmit data, again, with very useful information just over the air without any additional infrastructure required. Now, if you think about having a satellite network that is doing this repeating function all the time, you would have coverage throughout the entire globe without the need for a ground network to transit those data packets. It would just get repeated from whatever satellite is overhead. And you could do this with a cell phone because of some pretty amazing developments in regards to weak signal detection. We covered this in a recent video on my channel. And in that video, we hooked up my $30 uh, SDR dongle to my computer with a lousy antenna and we were able to pick up these weak signal FT8 transmissions from all over the world. Many of these transmissions are five watts or less, 
yet I was able to pick up a bunch of stuff from the Midwest here in the United States and even was able to pick up a bunch of signals from Europe all the way over here in Connecticut without a satellite and without internet. So you can imagine if you could configure a satellite to pick up weak signals from a cell phone and propagate them in a similar way, you could have something tremendously valuable here. These signals are basically bouncing off the ionosphere. And there's other developments in this space. There's another protocol called JS8 Call that allows for text transmissions uh, to take place within those packets. The other uh, FT8 protocol we just talked about would only do call sign and position. Uh, this would allow you to send a lot more data in those weak signal transmissions. And these were a bunch of things that I picked up from Ohio in that video. And another fun example comes from Crix, who is the maker of the EverDrive flash cartridges. He is a bit of an amateur radio hobbyist himself, and he was able to turn the EverDrive Pro cartridge into a radio to transmit these low powered signals. And you can see he was able from Spain uh, to hit areas as far as the United States with maybe a half a watt of power. So there's just so much development in radio signal detection. And that's due to the fact that our computers are so much more powerful these days to do it. So like all technological developments, advances in radio technology, advances in satellite technology, and advances in rocket technology have led us to a place where you can very cheaply and easily transmit bits of data without needing ground infrastructure to do it. And I think we're going to see a lot of this in the years ahead. Now this week's wrap up as always is being brought to you by all of you. And I wanna thank P-I-O-T-R for your super thanks this week. And I also wanna thank a new gold level supporter, Baby Metal Fox God, who contributed via Patreon. And I wanna thank everyone who contributed this week and everyone who's been contributing on an ongoing basis and all of you who watch on a regular basis too because all of those things equal channel growth and we'll have more to come on the ham radio stuff. I just got some more packet radio gear in. So we're gonna experiment with that once I figure it out and I've had a lot of fun with that actually. Now, if you wanna support the channel, you can. You can go to lon.tv support and make a monthly or a one-time contribution to the channel. We also support the YouTube membership program Floatplane and Patreon. If you want to follow the channel, we've got a bunch of different ways to do it. We've got my extras channel where I've got unboxings and supplementary content getting uploaded from time to time. We also have my Amazon shop where you can watch a lot of my product reviews ad free over there. And you can follow me at lon.tv slash Amazon shop because sometimes I just pop on Amazon while I'm recording a review and you can watch that there. There's a bunch of different ways to engage with the channel. You can sign up for my weekly email list at lon.tv slash email. And if you can't get enough of me, you can go to lon.tv slash digest and get a daily email from me. What I do is I take my blog and I just send it out uh, every day. So you can see all the stuff that I posted over the prior day. We also have my Facebook group at lon.tv slash Facebook group where you can connect with me and other viewers of the channel. We also have a Discord and a Telegram that we do have some good activity on as well. Now we have a store where I sell previously reviewed items for prices lower than new. I just got rid of a bunch of stuff and I've got more coming. So if you want to get alerted every time I add something to the store, you can sign up for the store alert email, which is different than the other two I just mentioned at lon.tv slash store alert. And that is going to do it for this week's weekly wrap up. I'm looking forward to seeing what Apple announces later today. I am recording this video before their big announcement. If I don't change this video, it's because Apple didn't say anything about this satellite thing, but I think it's coming either way. And that is going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Jim Tannis and Tom Albrecht, Hot Sauce and Video Games and Eric's Variety Channel, Brian Parker and Frank Goldman, Amda Brown and Matt Zagaya, and Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more.
And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv s.